Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. So you, you, yeah, so he did Birdman, which exploded, and it's still arguably one of the best films I've seen in the last 20 years. It's still, yeah. I just absolutely it's love it. It's so Birdman. genius. Oh, it's, it really so, it's, at, it's at a different level. And I got to ask you, man, because you've worked with some, some of the most amazing people in the business. When you're working with someone like Leo or Alejandro, I mean, they they are at genius levels. I mean, they they, they their crafts is, and I'm not trying to blow smoke up anybody's butt, but right. I mean, they they definitely playing with a different set of uh, cards than the rest of us in a good way because he, they're just you don't make Birdman and the Revenant right after each other and not you know <laughs> no unless you're unless you got some skills you know? like there's yeah. something they're there on a different so, plane yeah, yeah they, they so, are. Yeah. So, I mean, you've worked with everybody from, you know, low budget indies all the way to, you know, Oscar winning guys like Alejandro and Leo. What yeah. is that? What is it like being in the room? Not to say that you're not part of that group as a genius as well. So you have done some amazing work. No, no I didn't know. <laughs> I'm the one way over in the corner. Trust well, me. Well, but, no, the, but, the, the so writers, but the writers generally are off in the corner. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right where, they, right where our little stool is. That's where they expect us to be. But it's, um, no, the... The thing with Alejandro, he's, and then you, you combine with Chivo and what they were going to oh. do because we, we were working on the script and we'd do something. I go, Alejandro, I just feel like we can pull that one off. You know, we can't really do this and this. He goes, Mark, you know, I can do this. You know, let, <laughs> just let me watch. And so, so, it, and it always worked. Every time that I thought, you know, no, there's just no way he's going to be able to pull off that shot and make it, you know, visceral. There. But he did it and he and Chivo did it. And so, and that, and then Leo's performance, I mean, <laughs> and especially coming off of, I mean, you kind of look at, you know, Alejandro did Birdman and then Revenant and then Leo just did just did Wolf of Wall Street where he's just rat-a-tat-tat with the dialogue and everything's over the top and he's doing, you right. know, getting direct. And then he does the Revenant, which is all just kind of expression and so quiet and everything that I mean, when you can pull that off. I mean, again, like you said, they're just on a different level. And so it was so fun. I just I just was on I'd go I'd go up on set and just watch them up in Canada. It was like. This is like an awe, you know. But you were really... on set, so you were on set for a bunch of it. Yeah, it was just a as a tourist. Sometimes I would go. He'd, he'd need a little. We didn't change it. He had it so heavily rehearsed that everybody knew every move, and so there was really no changing of the script. But he would say, "I need some background dialogue here. Can you give me something that's going to happen there?" So I'd go to the trailer and do that. But the rest of the time, I'm just standing there watching them work and it was it was just amazing like i said i just i felt like i learned so much just by seeing those guys what they could do and i mean i saw that documentary that they did about the making of that uh, alejandro was on and i mean it, just, it it looked like hell man i mean that that's oh. a hellish hellish no. shoot like i mean there was there was a time i was sitting uh, there it was a scene where leo's hanging off the rock he's trying to fill a canteen after he's kind right. of drug himself to the river and it is so cold up there. I mean, I've got gloves and hat and car, and he's laying there on the side of the river, and he's filling his canteen. Is he's elbow deep in the water, and and, and it's not Hollywood, and it's not Hollywood water. It's real no, water. This is this is, <laughs> this is Canadian Rocky water, <laughs> right? And so, um, he's there, and they would shoot. Alejandro would shoot different angles until he was just shivering so much that they'd have to stop, and they'd put him in this suit with uh. a with like blow dryers, heaters that would then heat him up inside the suit, and he's doing doing um eating soup and then they'd go do it again and then they'd do it till the shivers then pull them out and do it i told him i walked up to him one day and i go man this is the only time in my life that i'm glad i'm not leonardo DiCaprio. you know <laughs> it's like it was the most brutal thing you, again stuff you don't really realize that actors go through you know and so it's not all just let's hang out in the trailer till we shoot this thing and well, I mean, he was so great he never complained there was never one time that he like moaned and bitched and groaned or anything it was just like He's just the best. He, he just he's there to do his job and do you know give the director exactly what they're looking for. I remember I remember someone saying the commentary for for God's sake somebody give Leonardo DiCaprio the Oscar before he kills himself. Like <laughs> I, mean, really was. I mean he just did everything and I mean stuff that you know Alejandro would ask him to do it and you know it's like you know Leo's just going oh God no really but he would do it. And yeah, so, and, and Alejandro's a, you know he's an intense figure. I mean he's he, without question he's an intense director, not in a bad way, but he he's have a, he has a vision, he has a presence yeah. about him. Um, 
you know, I've had him, I've had, a, I've had the pleasure of meeting Guillermo a couple times, and and he has that kind of different yeah. energy, different energy, yeah. completely, but has that presence. And those those kind of directors, I mean, when you're going to make the Revenant, you you've got to be a, a, a general. Like you can't you can't lollygag around. You can't show any weak. I mean, you're in you're no. in you're in the you're battling the elements and yeah because everybody he, you know it is like your army is miserable you know they're, right. they're looking you know you're you're trying you're looking for deserters at that point you know because right. it is so brutal and that and it's it's long and it's cold and it's hard and so um he had a, he had a cool thing that he would do he had this chime that would go off the same time um every afternoon and when that chime would hit everybody would just even if they were you know they would time it so they weren't in the middle of a shot but every but if it was pre-shot for everything everybody would stop no, no one would say a word. Everybody kind of just look around, get, get, get a feel for nature, kind of, you know, remember what we're doing and stuff. And then, boom, go back into it. And everybody was ready. And it was every day. And it was really cool. And, um, that's, an, that's an interesting technique. I mean, yeah. it's just kind of like – because you can get caught up in the – not only the minutia, but just the – you know, when you're in the battle, it's tough to yeah. just go, dude, look where we are. Look what we're doing. Take, take a second to breathe. That's it. That's, yeah. that's so. In, that's no, so. It's nice. I think he did it for everyone because he knew he needed it as well. I think it was very helpful to him because he is so intense, you know. And it is, you know, there are directors that, that will go, and it's just a job. Mm -hmm. It's it's more than the job for Alejandro. You know? oh, of course, this is, this is life and death, you know. And so he's. It's it's important. It's funny because I, I did something with Guillermo as well. Worked wrote a script with him and. They couldn't be more different, you know, <laughs> no, completely. As as approaching, you know, it's so, <laughs> it's so funny and they're good friends and everything, but they are completely different and both so amazingly talented oh. they, they do stuff in their own ways, but it's just, yeah, very different. And how was it writing with Alejandro? Like, I mean, bringing that energy, cause you're pretty much a lone writer from your credits. Like you yeah. generally don't, don't partner with no, other people. No, I don't. And it was, I wasn't sure, but we got in, it was, it was kind of fun because we would each write things that he wanted to tweak and change. I would write my 10 pages, he would write his 10 pages, and then we would trade. You know, he'd send me his, I'd send him mine, and then we would, you know, discuss which one was, you know, would have an argument about which was better, you know, he, and he always won, you know, <laughs> so, which is, you know, that's what he should have. But it was, um, but it was, it was fun because I got to kind of see storytelling through his eyes in a different way, and um, mm. also, you know, not just kind of like the lens kind of thing, but also how he, how the character stuff and everything that he would do. Now it's funny cause we made one big change <clears throat> that my draft of the Revenant was much more of a kidnapping. There was no Hawk. There was no sun, um, mm. in mine. Oh really? The, in, yeah, mine, the sun, you actually opened with the, there were, you see the hands of, of a little boy and a father and they're carving this star into the wooden stock of a, of a hunting rifle. And you hear the boy coughing, and stuff and you know he's sick you're getting just a couple words of dialogue and then there's a splinter in the little boy's hand and he gets a couple drops of blood that bleed into the star of the rifle and you kind of go into the grain you know of that rifle and then when you pull back out we're with you glass leo now and this aged old battered rifle and everything oh. and so my story was when after when fitzgerald leaves leaves glass to die he hadn't killed anyone he took his rifle and so he took the last piece of his son. He, the last thing that Glass had of his son. So it wasn't a, it, my story wasn't as much of a revenge to get to, to, to get Fitzgerald for that. It was he just wanted his, his, his son back. And so it was literally just to get his hands on the rifle. So it was a little different take. So that was the one big change, I think, in the, in the two versions. You know? yeah. Everything else was kind of more nuances, you know. Yeah, and that's, I mean, to be honest, either one seems to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, mean, I don't think anybody's complaining about his version, you know. No. It, you know, so it's, uh, no, it, it is, it's just, it's like if you want to go really hit somebody hard with the, the reason for revenge, or if you want it to be something that is more, you know, a little more subtle. And I do tend, I tend to be subtle, even in, you know, in dialogue. It's like, I don't want to say anything on the nose. It's like, let me right. take a few extra lines or a couple extra scenes to get stuff across, you know. To watch the rest of this interview, head over to bulletproofscreenwriting.tv.